history section. Take it it away, truly did, man. Bob. I was inspired by the history of Mr. J.P. Morgan, John Pierpont Morgan. How many Pierponts are coming wow. up on the name list I, I nowadays? Know du- I know a DuPont, and yeah. that's not the only Ponts I know. And Pont on fourth down. What? No. Uh, yeah, this guy was born April 17, 1837. Morgan, Mo, as we like to call him, yeah. uh, entered banking in 1857, 100 years before I entered the world. He was over at his father's London branch, apparently a bank. Thanks for adding that. Yeah, thank you. I like to tie it in, make it personal. Okay. Yeah. This guy moved over to New York City, New York City, that's right, where the salsa's made, and became one hell of an American financier, wow. a banker. He was also an art collector. You know, you know, you know. J.P. Morgan has you know, the name J.P. Morgan has been synonymous with money since the beginning of the century. Except for and that one I, actress. And now I know why. There was a J.P. Morgan. Remember her? She no. was on like Password or something. Anyway, let's move on to this. Um, J.P. Morgan. You know, uh, I read a lot about this. The favorite joke was this: Hey, what do you call someone with no limbs hanging on a wall? Art. art. That's right. <laughs> and what? And what do you call his limbs? Pieces of art. Here we go. Oh, John oh. Pierpont Morgan. That was his joke. Don't blame me. Uh, he dominated corporate finance and industrial consolidation during his day mm-hmm. on the planet. Mm-hmm. In uh, 1892, Morgan arranged for the merger of Edison General Electric and Thomson Houston Electric Company wow. to form the big company we all know as Gee. General Electric. That's right. Now, after financing the creation of Federal Steel Company, he got them together, merged. He was a merger. And he got together with Carnegie, or Carnegie, <laughs> See, as Carnegie, some people say. People say. Carnegie. Carnegie, some people do. I don't, don't think anybody says Carnegie. I just did. Okay, anyway, you're the only one. Carnegie Steel Company, several other steel and iron businesses to form a little company called U.S. Steel Corporation. Oh, I heard of that too. United States Steel. They this just. Is 1901. All this, this is happening back in the turn of the century. Yeah, when steel was everywhere. With, I didn't and think and they with were that even purchase. A country back then. Listen to J.P. Morgan with the purchase of U.S. Steel and that yeah. little conglomerate. Yeah. He captured two thirds of the steel market in the world. Wow. This guy is widely credited for having saved or rescued the U.S. national economy in general, and the federal government in particular on two separate occasions. No kidding, because this he, guy, yeah, yeah the government where said... Where is he now? Yeah, Gro- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, where is he now? Well, we're still paying off the last stupid deal with Grover. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. 1895, depth of the panic of uh, 1893 that started. The federal, That's when the Federal Reserve almost ran out of gold, right? The Treasury said, look, we're almost out. So yeah. Grover gets on the phone. Back then it was dot, 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 dash, yeah, dash, dash. Right. And, and Grover, you know, Grover from Sesame Street. I don't know if that's his voice. Anyway, Grover Cleveland gets on. He says, hey, Morgan, uh, can you create a private syndicate on Wall Street to supply the U.S. Treasury with $65 million in gold? Which is, uh, actually- so basically he created money. For the kind U.S. Of, government. He borrowed about a half of that from Europe to float the bond and it restored the Treasury surplus of $100 million. Had a boy, Grover. Oh, boy. Oh, uh-huh. Okay. You still owe. Didn't Keep. I just talk about government putting their fingers in, in free market yeah. economy? Yeah. And, and actually, I just looked this up. We still owe the government three tons of gold. Oh, do <laughs> No, <we>? I don't. <laughs> And then J.P. Morgan, he bequeathed. Now, what was? Did you ever bequeath? I think that means leave something. Uh, oh, good, because I, I think, think I bequeathed okay. last. But anyway, <laughs> he started bequeathing stuff. He's a bequeather. <laughs> Such a bequeather. Bequeather. His art collection. He just. Yeah. He, he so gave we got it, plenty. Gave, yeah, yeah. All up. right, get out of my ear. Anyway, <laughs> he he gave his art collection, a lot of it, to the Met over there in uh, New York City and yeah. some other place in Hartford. But he died in Rome about 1913, age of 75, uh, leaving his uh, most of his fortune in business to his kids. Kid, who, uh, you know, Jack, Jack yeah, Morgan. Jack Morgan. Yeah, and he did pretty good, too. He was one of the signatories on the establishment of the Federal Reserve back wow. in 1913. And listen to this. J.P. Morgan's uncle, yeah. James Lord Pierpont, was a notable composer and music director of his day. You know, Pierpont is famous for composing the original Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells? Shut the front door. Here's a, here's a rendition. Jingle Bells, 1850s is when that happened, huh? And it was originally called One Horse Open Sleigh. Nailed it. Wow, and, and before did. that, it was called, Where's the Other Horse? I Got a Slate to Pull. <laughs> I didn't catch on. So there you go, J.P. Morgan, history. Uh, yeah.